I can divide these challenges and opportunities, of course, in the same time into two groups. The, the lavish part of the negotiations, efforts in essence, are on our part. And, uh, and all of these reforms should be done by the domestic political leaderships. But on the other side, as I said previously in my speech in front of the students there, this is the two-way street in essence. So there are obligations on the part of the European Union. We can do eventually a great reform, but if that is not notified by the European Union, so you cannot progress within that very formal and very long uh, process of negotiating. So we have started negotiations. I think the first uh, big task, we are just now assembling the brightest minds in the country and we should redouble our efforts and really refocus on the European integrations. But at the same time, we will need a partner on the other side. I have no doubt, at least for the time being, that in Brussels, they will put attention or put focus on the region as well, including on North Macedonia, of course. Everybody knows that the uh, rise of inflation, uh, of the prices, uh, the cost of living, uh, energy prices and everything have been in a large part provoked by that illegal Russian aggression on Ukraine. So these are the negative consequences of the war in, on the continent for the first time after so many decades when no one believed that it can happen at all. But on the other side, I am seeing, I am recognizing a renewed interest of the European Union as such towards the Western Balkan region. And I hope that that interest, that uh, new, newly find the focus of the European Union over the region will not last as the war in Ukraine uh, will last. So I'm a bit afraid and has a bit of reservations that, uh, that maybe as soon as the war in Ukraine is over, I would like, of course, not tomorrow, but today, that all of that and tragedy of Ukrainian people to be over and to stop. But as, the soon, as soon as the war in Ukraine is, is over, maybe I would like to see, of course, not only that guessing, uh, would like to see a shift from the European Union interest on the region, which is doubling in the last few months at least, than to wane or to go away. Because believe me, without the strong, I would say, I would like to say watchful eye of the European Union, but without the um, monitoring, or close monitoring on the part of the European Union towards all the Western Balkan six countries, how they are doing the reforms, are there reforms of quality or just uh, rhetoric? So we cannot go far away from the point we are now. And everybody knows that we are, in essence, staying in the same place, in the same spot for many years. I came here accompanied by our ambassador here in Poland, who had graduated 20 years ago at this college. And uh, he invoked a few of the scenes and a few of the people being in the same generation. Unfortunately, in the meantime, we do not have a lot of people who have graduated here. Not only in this or in Out College, beyond doubt, and especially regarding the European integration process, which has many layers inside. And all of that expertise and knowledge should be, should be, somehow, should be somehow transferred over to the people in the region. There are two way streets as well. Then the people from Natolin, I mean professors, experts, practitioners, not only theoreticians, then they should transfer their knowledge to the countries in the region, then, but just going there. But on the other side, I think that uh, the quota for the students from the region should be, should be enlarged. You know, to have more people who will, I would say, from the very European source directly, then take that knowledge and after that apply in their domestic countries.